this next stream will be called uh, part two. So every time I, I start and stop a stream, uh, it makes a new file or a new video for it on um, on YouTube. All right, so uh, still on page 159 here. We're going to flip over the page to uh, 160 here. So when we were talking about the different materials that uh, um, are denoted by these hatches, here's the sort of common industry hatches that are that are used. So you got iron, steel, and brass. So uh, occasionally with some of these assignments you will be asked to do steel hatching with the double parallel lines. So to draw that, you don't have to measure them, you just kind of get a feel for it and then, and same with the iron too, you just um, just start draw, you know, drawing away. And I, and I would even make them lighter than lighter lines than what you see in here. So that's um, that'll be something to to watch out for in the instructions. I'll let you know. I'll point it out uh, in the instructions for the um, assignment when that kind of thing is is going on. Okay. So um, now we're going to look at the different kinds of of holes that are used, uh, and these happen both in steel and in wood. So uh, if you're doing wood beams and there's connectors uh, that secure the beams to their supports, uh, you will often see the same kind of finishing methods used as we see with steel. So when we say that we're drilling right through, uh, holes will sometimes go all the right, all the way through. Uh, and then sometimes the hole will be partial depth. Now when a hole is partial depth, of course, as you folks have probably seen on the end of a drill bit, there's a conical section at the bottom of the drill bit where it begins to cut its way down into the material. So when you make a hole of a certain depth, there's actually a little bit of it that's deeper uh, because of the end of the, of the bit. Now, when we talk about the recesses that are put into a material for the end of a connector, so screw heads uh, sometimes have um, funnel shaped ends on them. Uh, some of them have uh, what we call a pan head and some of them are uh, a flat face like you're seeing here with this spot faced. And so I'm just going to show the um, the different shapes, of course, that you see with uh, with bolts and screws. So so with screws, you'll see that kind of a shape at the end of the screw or bolt head. Um, and here we have what's called a, a pan head. And in finer fabrication, and I can't remember what the name of this um, connector end is called. So you've got these three. Um, and I'm having a total brain death here, and I can only remember the middle one, that it's a, a pan head. Um, so with these three connectors, I'm sure it'll come back to me in a second, um, you would use the pan head here in a counter bore. And so sometimes you'll see that, that, that the connector it has a, a fairly shallow head on it and it's rounded um, on the shoulders. Uh, sometimes you'll also see bolts that you get where the thicker part at the top is also a cylinder like that. So in the top of it here, you might have whatever uh, kind of um, a driver that you're going to use to, to put this thing in. So whether it's Torx or Robertson or Phillips. So all of these different um, connectors uh, could provide that. So the pan head and the um, uh, this one, it's got the, the cylindrical piece on top. So we're talking it would look something like this. And then it would have the the Torx piece in the top here. Uh, those two 
would be often used in a counterbore environment. And sometimes with the counterboring, they'll size the counterbore so it totally exactly fits the height of our um, our piece here. And then with the pan head, that pan head might end up being um, recessed slightly below the face of the material. So counterboard, spot faced, and counter sunk, those support these uh, different ends of the connector. So we're going to start dealing with those in our in our drawings here as well. Now, uh, going back to that original drawing that we were uh, looking at earlier, so this is the one that we spent a bit of time on, th this one right here in the uh, in the previous video. So we're going to go back and, and talk about that again here. So when we do a web like this, and we, we always section right through the middle of it. So there's a couple things that are going to happen here. Number one, this is the literal section of what you would see. You'd see the hole. Uh, you'd cut through the, the flange. Uh, but the little web here, I mean, we would literally be sectioning through that, but we don't do that because we don't want to give the the indication in section that the part actually looks like this, right? That the web is full depth. So what we do instead is we show the web not sectioned and we show the hole beyond in the section. So um, if you showed the hole as hidden lines and still showed the center line, I could live with that. So what I'm saying is, it says here that if one of the holes in the vertical section is shown, uh, if you were working for a machine shop and you drew the section through this thing like this, so it would still not show the, the web sectioned, right? So we don't still want to show that as background, but if we did this as hidden lines and then showed the center line and then we we uh, hatched it so here I'll hatch it with a pencil because otherwise if I do it with a pen it's going to be too heavy so if you if you drew it this way this is still a win right so I'm okay with that presentation not showing the hole in the background now they're saying it, the industry standard would still be to draw, draw that hole in the background but I'd be less I'd be less fussy about that. And the, the fabricator is going to have another view, of course. So they'll have, uh, you know, so for something like this, you could ask yourself, well, would I need to actually create a section view for this object? Really? Like, would I need to? I'll have my top view um, looking down. I'll have my front view. And I'll have my side view. So this is the kind of object where, you know what, you wouldn't, wouldn't really need to have... Um, a section view. But if there really was a need to have a section just for, um, you know, if there's some other special aspects of how it's going to be fabricated that you can only see in section, like, you know, maybe the spot facing or countersinking or something like that, and you really wanted to show that sectionally. And you want to do it with as few views as possible. So maybe just a top and a section view. Um, then, you know, even then, you'll see the hidden lines in the top view for those two holes. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, so the next thing to talk about here before we get into the assignment is when we have radial objects that have spokes. Now, this is same concept as we mentioned above. We've got a, a web, and it's not full depth. So when we look at a situation like a wheel here, when we're sectioning through it, we've got the hub in the middle, and then we've got the rim. So if we were to cut a literal section right through the middle of this thing, then, you know, our section line would go right down through the middle of the, of the web or the spoke, if you will. And so sectioning through that, this is what it really would look like. But instead what we do is we say, hey, well, the rim is continuous, the hub is continuous, but the spokes are not. So when we cut a section through them, 
we don't even show, and I'll just kind of shade here, the spokes, these things are never shown sectioned. And again, it's to prevent the erroneous impression by section that this entire wheel is filled in. So we show the hub sectioned, the rim sectioned, but not the spokes in between. So that's just a clarification that I want to make sure that as we move into the next drawing assignment here, <clears throat> that you folks have a good handle on. So if we were to think of that section, whoops, if we were to think of this section here and then look at this drawing on the next page, it's the same view, right? It's the same, it's the same view. It looks exactly the same. So if you weren't shown anything else and you were given this section and I was going to ask you, okay, what does this thing look like in real life based on the section? <laughs> That's what would happen. So that is why when we're sectioning through wheels that the spokes are never sectioned. They're always shown um, unsectioned. Okay, so now at the bottom of page 162 here, we've got a um, a connecting plate here uh, that allows a shaft to pass through it, and then it's got a couple of bolts on each end or holes for bolts to drop down and to um, secure this thing into place. So when we section through this thing, what would we expect that section to to look like? <clears throat> so here I'm just going to do a quick little section here. And I can do it right on top of this view. So a section through this thing. So above here, our web, which is this, these pieces right here, those are not going to be sectioned. <clears throat> so my section view, uh, you can see that I've got my hole here. So what's my section going to look like? So any place where I'm cutting through full depth material, we will see full sectioning happening. So that is sectioned. Then the webs on top there, they're not full depth. So we're just going to show them in projection. And so those are the lines in the background. Now, if this was an architectural section, we would actually see a difference in line weight between the section line and the object lines for the web, which are kind of sitting in the background there. So for our hole here. So these are all actually the same line weight. Now, just for the purposes of showing you guys online, because, you know, the limitations of, of resolution of live streams and all that stuff, I am using a different, like I'm using the pen for the section stuff versus the pencil for the unsection stuff. So for hatching this, That's what we would see. So we still have, move this into some white space here. We're still gonna have our object lines in the background and there's no difference in line weight between <clears throat> uh, where the section is happening and where the line in the background is happening. So they are the same line weight. 
So if we look at in the uh, in the textbook and other locations, mechanical drafting makes no, uh, they don't distinguish between the lines where we have sectioned material and lines that are just object lines in the background. So it is object lines that are used in all cases for all of this stuff. So what's missing? Well, we need to have some center lines that would go through this thing. So for the hole through here where we've got the um, counter bore that's going to have this little recess in it for the bolt to sit in, when you look through that in section, I just did a control Z in my mind, drew that line wrong. I was like, undo, undo, can't undo. So if we were to look at this area here, um, this bit right here, and just look at that a bit larger, um, so we would see something like this. So in this case here, I'm just going to stick to the pen. I'm not going to switch to the pencil. So there we go. So that's all the line work that you would see there. And then we'd go through and hatch this stuff. 45 degree hatch which I realize I'm not doing exactly 45 degrees here. It's more like 60. So there's our center line. Sorry, you folks are probably hearing my neighbor's motorbike. He's evidently going out for a ride. So there's our center line. There's all our object lines for the counter bore. Now, uh, if you're doing a counter sink, it's very similar. It's just that the hole would be pan shaped and then when we uh, we, we um, transition between the the cone shaped area and the regular hole you do see that line uh, going on the other side so here we had something like like this All right so just be drawn like that and then any sectioning those uh, section lines would be drawn to show the sectioned material. Okay, so in this next piece here where we've got a top view and a front view, and you can see here how the front view for this one is oriented sideways from it instead of below it. And again, that's because um, on a landscape style sheet, if we only need the two views to draw this thing, then that's all that we would need. Now, for sectioning this, we're trying to look at this and see, okay, how is the section through this thing going to look? So you can kind of see where the, um, we've got changes in thicknesses of material. Now we don't have any webs like this one has here. There aren't any webs. So this section is actually going to be pretty simple to source out. So here you can see we've got a, a dashed in line that's kind of showing the shape of in behind. So this thing's got like a little bowl that's open on the bottom and there's a slot in it. So in terms of continuous material, it's actually shaped like this. So this is what the section is going to look like. <clears throat> and then this thing would be just drawn on the same shape on the other side. So we'd have an object line here that goes across. Like so. So now it's just a matter of, of showing um, some hidden lines in the background for where these slots work their way around the, um, 
Uh, and then we've got um, a hidden line here across for that. Continuing. Center line. And then hatching. So that would be the resultant. And you can see its similarities uh, between the front view and the section. So that's the kind of stuff that we'll be getting into here. And it's great because you can sort of you know visualize how these shapes would transition from sort of a front view into a section. All right, what are we at here? 10.08. Okay, just keeping track of the time. Now, sometimes when we cut a section through an object, it doesn't make sense to cut a section right through the middle of the thing. Um, so it would actually make sense to offset the section. So here you can see our dashed section line. So instead of cutting like right through the literal middle, middle of this thing and ending up with a section like this where we might have to show these holes in the background with hidden lines and a center line of, as well. Why not jog the section line so that you can catch some of these holes on the other ends so that you can see right through them. So on your top view, you've got to indicate with your section that you are um, jogging the section line so that someone who's looking at the section can understand why it is that they're seeing this hole cut through instead of being shown as hidden lines. Okay, so the next um, thing here, so in a section, uh, what they're saying is, don't run. Now, if we were looking at this section here, do we really need to draw the section line going right through our object? And the answer is we don't. Now, the reason that this is poor practice is that the annotation that you're, you're using to indicate where the section is being taken is actually obscuring the drawing itself. So a better way to, to do it is to show the section lines where the sections are being taken off the sides of the object. Indicate the direction that you're looking. Indicate which section it is. So when you look on the sheet, you know whether it's section A to A or section B to B. So this is considered a better way to deal with it. Now, in the same example again, would we need to draw the section line all the way through? And I would say you don't need to. So let's just do a quick sketch of what that would look like. So instead of in my top view showing the section line going right through, I would show my section line off the side. And then what you might do is just in a couple of places indicate the fact that this section is being staggered. So we do something like this. Stop the section line, pick it up on the other side here. And that way there's much less of the section line graphic that's going to be seen on this drawing. And then on go the center lines. And you notice that the center lines for these holes 
um, are not continuous right through the object because they're small holes. So we don't want to obscure that much of the object by showing the center lines for it. Here, for the center lines in the middle, what I, again, would like to do is just see that dashed part of the center line intersect in the middle. So here, I'll just look at some white space so you can see. You want to have that sort of like a little plus symbol that occurs right at the center of each circle uh, with your center lines. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here about the kind of dimensions they want with the section lines. I'm not too fussy about that. Um, I don't think that that's, there's sort of necessarily an industry standard on this stuff anyway. So um, what we'll do here is we'll take another, what are we at, 10, 13? Uh, let's take another 10 minute break. We'll say, we'll come back at 10, 10, 20.